Go ahead. Okay, we're standing in a pasture paddock. We have this all split up into different paddocks for the cows. And we experimented last year with different ways of planting without using any herbicide, tillage, or any kind of inputs whatsoever. And I'll put a link to that at the end of this video so you can see what we did exactly. But I'm pleasantly surprised at how this looks right now. It was just grass before, right? Yeah. It's pretty much just grass. Before that, it was a cornfield, you know, typical kill everything, plant corn type cornfield. And we did take some soil samples last year and sent them in. And then at the end of this growing season, we'll do it again and compare the two. So what we planted here was um, crimson clover, rye, and some red clover, peas, whatever we had on hand, we put it down. We let the, first we let the cows go through and eat everything. And then we put the seed down and we put the cows on again when things popped up and let them chew everything down and get all the grass down to where the other stuff could compete. And then over the winter, you know, it really wasn't looking that good a month ago, but it looks pretty good now. The grass took off. And more importantly, though, we have crimson clover here. There's a nice crimson clover. It's about to go to seed. Real pretty flowers. We have, um, where's that uh, red clover? So the taller clover is the red clover. Yeah, I lost it. Lost it? <laughs> You find it when you need it. Everything's green. But there's some red clover that's taller. There's white clover that's low to the ground. And then there's... Uh, Here's peas. Yeah, there's peas. Okay, so these are Austrian winter peas. You can see that's about up to my knee there. And that's just a fantastic nitrogen fixer. So there's peas here. I'd like to see more peas. So next time when we do this, we'll just put more peas down. So you experiment, see what works, what doesn't work, and do more of what does work. So there's some pigweed coming, but it's not a problem because it's, you know, everything is out competing with pigweed. Some dock here and there, but those weeds aren't hurting anything, daisies. Normally this field would just be grass and different kinds of weeds. But the clover in here is fabulous. Right when deer need it, you know, this is, uh, what's the date today, May? Like 15th, I think, something like that. Close to the middle of May. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so deer are gonna start dropping fawns here and they need that protein. So they're getting plenty of it here. I don't even see any browse pressure. There's just so much of it that they can't keep up with. Steve, what's this clover here? Do you know what that is? This taller stuff? Yeah, it's really big. No crimson. That's just one of those white clovers that we put in with this. See the, this could be balanza. Let me look at it. Yeah, this is a balanza clover. It has pretty big leaves. Now, when they show you a picture of balanza clover, it'll have a leaf like the size of your the palm of your hand but the, I've never seen one get that big but that's a nice actually a really nice big leaf okay and the way you can tell it's balance it's got a hollow stem now the nice thing about uh, the hollow stem you know you can chew that right up you know that doesn't taste that bad actually it's probably kind of sweet isn't it it is it's a nice clover it's an annual, but has a lot of hard seed, and it reseeds itself. So we'll see what this does when it goes to flower and then reseed. We we the, two years ago we didn't seed this at all. We didn't put any of that that uh, crimson on. That came from two springs ago, two falls ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so that crimson clover, all we did was kind of run that down with. We tried mowing one strip and we tried, uh, what did we, we went over it with a disc on the one. And then one we just. Run over with the vehicles. Just started running the cars back and forth. Not, you know, we knocked the seeds off. You let them get good and ripe so they fall off. 
and just knock them off and run them down. And you can run all this stuff down flat with your tires. So that's how we did a no-till, no spray, no equipment, food plot, <laughs> no seed even. So if you have Balanza, Burseam, and uh, Crimson, Crimson, uh, let it go to seed, and then cull the packet. Don't disturb the soil. Just cull the packet. Uh, now, because John has cattle here, we do want the grass. But if you didn't want the grass, you could hit that grass either with some mowing or you could hit it with clethodim to, to uh, hold back the grass and just let that clover go nuts in here. Uh, you can go on and on like that for years and you don't have to really uh, reseed it. So, so that's one way to do food plots very inexpensively. So how many deer do you usually see when you, in your headlights when you come in? Easily about a dozen. About a dozen in here every night. Yep. On an eight. Not, not even an eight. So, <laughs> pretty and, good food plot. And they have a lot of other fields to choose from. There's acres and acres up there. But that's just fertilized grass up there. And they all want to feed here. Because this is where we put the cattle with the cows uh, replenish the soil with their manure and it just there's nothing like livestock for a food plot it works to recycle nutrients and the cows do your fertilization for you okay something to think about